Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to continue on with our selenite series and we're going to learn how to work with different form input fields. So we're going to be looking into different input fields such as text input field as well as drop down input field. We'll also take a look at how to interact with checkbox input fields. And finally, we'll also take a look at how to interact with date input fields. Now, these are all the common input fields that we're going to be working with on a typical web page. So it's really important for you to know how to work with these. And with Selenite, you're going to see how easy it is to work with all different types of input fields over here. So let's take a look at the example scenario that we're going to be working with. So I'm over here on practice.automationbird.com and I'm going to scroll all the way down. And at the quick links, you're going to find at the very bottom, we have a support form. You could also go directly to practice.automationbro.com forward slash support form and that will take you to this page. And within this page, you're going to see a bunch of form fields. So we have a typical text input field for name, email and subject. And then we have a drop down input fields where we can select different options to get in touch with, for example, the support team, the technical team or the sales team. After that, we have our checkbox. So we can select multiple checkboxes over here, which is again a good option to work with. And then we have a date availability over here. So if I click on that, it opens up a date picker and I can select any particular date here. So we'll also take a look at how we can interact with date picker like this. And then after that, we have a simple text area over here where we will enter our message and then click the submit button. So after we have submitted this form, we're going to see a basic alert message that's going to say that our form have been successfully completed. So we'll just simply assert this at the end. So this is going to be our overall test. After this test, you will have enough experience on how to work with different input fields with Selenide. So let's head over to our IDE and get started. All right, so I'm over here on IntelliJ and I already went ahead and created a new file and I call that one form test. And within that file, I've simply created a new class, which is form test. And I did a new test method over here with the name of test form fields. And the only step that I added here is opening up the URL, which is simply going to the support form right here. We already covered this in our previous video, so that's why I don't want to cover this again. What we're going to be focusing on is how to fill in all the fields, how we can click the submit button, as well as how we can verify the submit message. So let's start with filling all the fields as that's the most important part here. So for that, I'm going to head over to Chrome. And then the first input field that we're going to be working with is our name as well as the text input field. So all three of them over here are text input fields. So I'll do right click here and inspect. So here we need to find a unique element. So I'm going to select my input field right here. And if I scroll a little bit up, you're going to notice I have a div right here. And within that div, I have a class which is support name. So if I just search for this and do dot support name, you can see right here, I can find that input field, which is for name. And I already looked this up before. That's why I know this is the class name that we're going to be working with. Obviously, for your website, you would need to know which classes or which unique elements you need to work with. So from here, I need to access the input field. So I'll just do support name input and that will give me access to the input field right here. Similarly, I can do the same thing for email and subject as well. So that would be support dash email and then the other one would be support dash subject. So these are all our nice class names that we can use, which are unique. So we're going to go ahead and implement this in our code. So in Selenide, as we learned in our previous videos, to interact with any kind of element, we need to add in the dollar. And within dollar, we need to add in our actual selector. So here I'm going to paste that in. So the first one we need is our name. So this is dollar support dash name. And then I need to go ahead and import my dollar command here. So I'm going to do that import static dollar. And this one needs to be double quotes. So I'm just going to fix this. There you go. So we have did dollar and we have added a CSS selector. Now, in order for us to type anything into an input field, all we have to do is dot val, which is basically adding a value to that particular input field. And then I can simply add in whatever value I want here. So in this case, let's say I want to add in a test name. So I can, let's say, put here name as Luffy. So that's my name. Now we need to add in the email. So I will add that as well. I'm going to do email. And then I'll simply add an email here. So Luffy at onepiece.com. Same thing we need to do to add in a subject.
And let's say for subject, I'll say need help with repairing my ship. So these were all the common text input fields that we were working with. The next thing we're going to be interacting with is going to be our drop down. So that is going to be a little bit different than simply just doing adding a value. So if I go back, so this is the drop down, and here I can say if I need help with support team, technical team, or sales team. So if I just select here, you're going to notice that this is a select option. And within select, I have multiple options here, and that I have for quick support team, technical, as well as sales team. So what I need to do is first select the drop down. And once I have access to the drop down select, then I need to pass in which option I want. So let's say maybe I need help from the technical team. So I'm just going to provide the option value that is going to be the technical team. So that is pretty simple to do as well with Selenaid. So I'm going to head back and I'm going to copy this whole thing, paste it here. The subject will change to drop down. And then instead of providing a value, what I will do is do select option. There you go. And within that select option, it will know that we are working with a select input field. And actually, this should be select, not input. So I'm going to change this to select. So select option knows that we are working with the select input field. And here we need to provide the option that we need. So in this case, I know I need the technical team help. So I'll just provide that. So it's going to look up for all the select options and it's going to check whichever one has the value as technical team. It will go ahead and select that. All right, the next thing we need to do is work with a checkbox. So checkbox is actually pretty simple. All we have to do is find the checkbox we need to work with and click on that. If I go back here, let's say if I need help over here with hardware issues. So I'm going to select this. And all I have to do is simply click on this input right here. So when I do that, it will go ahead and select this checkbox. And I can do this for the other ones as well. For example, hardware issue or other, I can select multiple. But for now, I'm only going to select the first one. So we need a unique element for that as well. So I know for checkbox, I have the class for checkboxes. And within that, I have an unordered list and then I have multiple list options. So I'm going to select UL, LI, and then this is the second option. So I'll do nth child 2. So this is simply saying that from my list, go to the second item. And then I need to click on that. And this is an input, right? So I'm going to select input from there. So as you can see here, it's now highlighting hardware issue. So I'm going to copy this whole thing and head back to my IntelliJ and then paste that there. So I'll say dollar and then simply paste this. And all I have to do is just simply do a click here. So it will go ahead and click on the checkbox for me. All right, the next one is my date input field. Now that one is a little bit tricky. It's not as straightforward. So we just have to understand how date input field works. And this is actually going to be different based on how the date picker is implemented for your particular website. So let's just take a look at how this is implemented in this website. So if I go here, so this is my date picker. The first thing I need to do is click on that. So I need to find the element for that. And I can see here, this is my date picker. So it's an input field. So I need to click on that input field. And I also have a class name which I can work with, which is the date time here. And also I did a helper class name here, which is called support date. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll do support date. And this is an input field. So the first step is clicking on this input field. So we're going to do this. I'm going to go back to IntelliJ. And here I'm going to say, this is my date input field. I need to first click on that. And let's just make it a little bit clear that this is date input field we are working with. So date input field. And these two were for drop down and checkbox. And the one on the tops were simply text input fields. All right, so for date input field, I have went ahead and clicked on that input field. Now we need to go ahead and select an actual date. So that is the tricky part because which date should we select over here? With some application, you cannot select a past date. So here you need to figure out which date to work with. In this particular date picker, I can technically go ahead and select a previous date. But let's just imagine we don't have that option and need to select a date which is for the future date. So in this case, 28th is the current date. And if I want to select maybe let's say 30th or 31st or maybe any kind of future date, we first need to observe the actual text value over here or the 
value for entire date picker options. So if I hover over to this, you can see these are all part of a span classes and I have area labeled for each particular one. So typically one of the ways are what you can do is you can get the current date and with current date, you can just add plus one to that. So if let's say current date is August 1st, you can add plus one and that would be August 2. So you would find it using the area label. That's one way to do it. The other way is here you can see for this particular date picker, I have a class with previous month date. And if I go down, I also have a class with today. So this is the today date. And then I have a class with next month date. So just so I know the future will always be the next month day, I can simply go ahead and select this class. So let's say if I select this. And here I can find that when I do next month date, it's going to go ahead and pick any date from the next month or basically the first date from the next month. In this case, it's September 1. So this just makes it easier for me to go ahead and select that input field. Now, there are other ways to do it as well. You can also do today plus one. So that is also an option. So for that, I would do something like this. I'll just say today and then I'll just add in span there. So it will go ahead and select the next day after the today's date. So you can see here it's selecting this one. So there's just different ways of doing it for now. I'm just going to go with next month day. It will go ahead and simply click on that one. So keep in mind, this is going to be different for each date picker you're working with. The implementation might be different. But I just give you a general example of how you should be looking for this. Ideally, you should be looking for, let's say, the area label and find the current date and then do plus one on that. Or if you have an option where in this case you have different classes, which are actually showing you the previous or the current date, you can pick based on that as well. So let's head over to IntelliJ and implement this. So here I'm going to do the next month day. I did that and then I simply need to click on that. There you go. Now the next steps are pretty simple. I have to simply click on the submit button. So this is just finding the submit button. In this case, I already know that the CSS selector for that is button type submit. And then I need to simply click on that. And finally, after that, I have to add in my assertion. So for assertion, I know that my CSS selector is a div with a role of alert. And I can show that to you as well if I head over to Chrome. And what I'll do is just do a quick submit over here. And there you go. So, and then I'm gonna select this one. And you can see here, I have a div role alert and that's what I'm actually working with. So that's my CSS selector. So let's go ahead and implement our session as well. And that's our final step. So I already have my CSS selector here and I'm going to say that it should have, now I'll say it should have the text and I'll add the text there, which is right here. So this is my overall test. Let's try to run this to see whether this would work. I'm going to click on run over here. And there you go. We just ran our test and it successfully passed. Awesome. So just to make sure my session is working, I'm going to fill this assertion here by removing the exclamation mark and I'll try to run it again. This time it should fill. And there you go. This time it's actually taking longer for that particular page. And our session filled. If I look at the error, you can see right here it was expecting with exclamation and we passed it without the exclamation. That's why it's actually failing. So this is with exclamation. This is without exclamation. So there you go. We just went ahead and looked at all different input fields. We looked at the text input field, which we added using dot value. We looked at drop down and checkbox. For drop down, we worked with select option. For checkbox, we simply clicked on whatever the checkbox we need to work with. For date input field, in our particular case, we clicked on the input field and then from there, we found which date actually we have to work with. In our case, I selected the next month day, but you can also do today plus one or whichever date that you need to work with. Based on that, you can provide the actual area label for that. And then I simply went ahead and clicked on the submit button and then verified the submit message. All right, I know this was a long video. We did went ahead and covered all different types of input fields. So hopefully you will have good confidence on how to work with different types of input fields now with Selenide. So that's it for this video guys. If you like to support my work, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button on this video. You could also support me by sharing this video with others.
If you have any questions, do let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next one.